Oh shit, actually got it. Oh well. Welcome to the latest edition of MiHoYo. I mean HoYoVerse. Trying to take your entire wall and trade offer. You get waifu, husband, or the new diversity, some furt. <coughs> Zen the Zone Zero. It is the second and last beta test before its release. <laughs> In 2024, I think they announced it during the Game Award. I'm gonna put my money on mid-2024, by the way. <laughs> well, I, good Chad, was fortunate enough to win the lottery system to get into this beta, and I'm gonna give you a complete overview of my soon-will-be-wasted progress, because that's just how betas work and i never been in one before. And you can determine if you want to play this game. So there's probably isn't much they can do now until the release in 2024. So I feel like it's probably the right time for you to determine if this game is worth any of your precious time and money for these waifu and husbandos. And I'm sure most of you watching these videos are veteran gacha gamblers and have a limited budget that you distribute across all your other gacha games. Because you know, you can only get so many waifus and husbandos at once, you know. Unless you're rich, then that's a different story. Another story is if you guys haven't played a single gacha game, and well, I mean, I guess you could find out too. <laughs> My script for this video is 11 page long, so buckle up, open those eyes, and clutch that freaking wallet because there is a lot and a temptation, maybe. So you, the legendary proxies, because you know gacha games need a nickname to address you, popped into existence after watching this fancy title spazzes out and watch TV for a potential 6 minutes of straight unique ads that created for this game in the loading screen. Pop. Can we talk about this loading screen for a second? These are unique video ads for movie tapes inside the game. They made like 6 minute worth of unique video ads for the freaking title screen. This amount of effort is insane. Like compared to like Genshin, you're going through like a portal on Celestia or something. And then Honkai, you go up an elevator. And in Star Rail, you launch a freaking train jumps and here you're watching TV and somehow they put more effort into it that's <laughs> that's pretty funny <clears throat> so you're introduced along with your sibling that? that immediately talks 14? <laughs> sorry I thought my ears were playing tricks on me a Hoyoverse MC actually talking that's crazy well, anyways your job as a proxy is to guide and take commission for the business relating to the hollow dangerous area that somehow expands and collapses and it's basically littered with the antagonist of this game which is a natural force in the game similar to Honkai in uh, Honkai Impact 3rd, the Ethereals. That and you also take everyday commissions so you might as well be a freelancer. And oh right you also run a videotape store called Random Play which is a cool cover up but I'll cover that in a minute. The duo Legendary Proxies are codenamed <laughs> and you specialize in controlling your scarf talking Bangboo Eos. He is precious by the way, way better than Paimon and I was mad when there was a quest that made him cry. I've only had Eos. a day and a half, but if anything happened to him, I would kill everyone in this room and then myself. Oh, what are bang boobs? You oh. Bang boo, you may ask? Well, they are basically rabbit shaped robots that are designed to be quite resilient and they have their own purposes depending on, you know, what job they have. And ours is Oas, and we supposedly specialize in them because we have like a lot in our store. And they are crucial to our hollow operation. And such operations are in line with the Hollow Raiders who, as the name suggests, raid the Hollows for loot. Which is where you meet the first faction, the Cunning Hares, who supposedly regularly are you, Nicole. Some of you might know her, you know, for obvious reasons. 
Such job would also align yourself with other faction that you would see in the game such as Bellabog Industry, the Victoria Maid Company, Oboe Swat, or basically literally the military, and many more but these are the only one covered in the limited story we have in the second beta. That's basically the gist of the story and pretty much the most amount that I can give without actual huh? spoilers. Oh, and your proxy business is supposedly illegal, so your random play videotape story is actually kind of more of a cover-up business. So I guess Hoyoverse is showing us how to launder money. I'm just joking. They would never promote that. <laughs> and canonically, due to wise wanting to watch documentaries every day. <laughs> yeah, um, that's proof. I'll show you. Come on, bro. <laughs> what do you say? But the documentary, I. Uh, I mean, the customers really wanted to watch this month is already on sale. Let's not go changing plans just yet. Ah, ha. so you're using the store's inventory for your own purposes. Their sibling relationship is actually quite nice to see. I think some of you in the comment pointed it out, but there's also other comments too. <laughs> Don't do it, comment section. Stop it. Get some help. Well, with added out of the way, let's talk about the settings and location of this game. Your video store is located in a humble, friendly neighborhood owned with other business owners slash competition called Sixth Street. It's one of many safe zone locations in this game. So it's probably the one you're gonna spend most of your time on because it includes all of the shop and daily. Have you guys noticed that this game is not a fully open world map by Genshin? I think that was pretty clear already though. It's similar to that to Honkai Star Rail and Honkai Impax is like closed large area that you have to teleport to basically. I guess it's a good or bad thing depending on your preferences but I don't really mind. You get around this game using a car that you can't drive. It's more or less a teleport only to areas that you have unlocked in the lore so yeah very much force you to play the lore. So about your video store random play, you spend your time there with your Bangu 18, your manager, make money called Denny's in this game. It's the equivalent to Mora, and you do this by basically recommending three genres of movie, and you recruit customers that would ask you specific movies for them. And it could range from like specific genre of movie to later on you have to like read the movie and then give it to them because they ask for very specific stuff. Bruh. Your store level will increase as your internaut, basically AR level equivalent in Genshin, so it just levels up by playing the game. <laughs> This increased your Denny's earning and selections of movies. So, huh? man, maybe we should just ditch this proxy business when our video store cover up makes more money. What do you think, Mel? Bruh. So now you're in the back rooms, your house basically. And this is where actual business goes down. You see the wall of CDs that actually document your journey. So, as you play, you actually could replay this by going to the shelf and going to the certain chapters. And I think they actually made like a whole thumbnail for those. Too. That's pretty nice. And then here you got a VR headset that allows you to grind for materials of your selection. Enemy cards, they call it, which have rare materials, the more difficult they are, which is nice. You obtain these cards by playing the game, basically. And it's probably best to spend your batteries on this, you know, when you want to get rid of it quickly because you're a busy, busy, busy person that contribute to society, totally. Then you got the archives, which is basically the tutorials of the gameplay if you want to go back to it for some reason. And all the agents you have come in contact with in the lore, and also pictures and items that you have obtained from playing the quest and there's a locker that does nothing and a couch you can sleep on which is actually quite useful for this game time mechanic and the main event is your computer and this very ginormous old school TVs because this is the Mihoyo loves the time requirement for the quest. Like in Genshin, there's a lot of time actually. There's like a time requirement that you have to go and then spend that damn block and then spread around the time. It's kind of like that here too, very much. Except they took it up a notch because now there's always an indicator representing the time of day you're in because that would determine your schedule. Yes, Koyoverse is helping their player base manage their schedule and their life because I'm assuming they think everyone's a snob. I guess. 
Well, I guess it could be true. Well, now there's morning, there's evenings, and then there's night quests. With the exception of some quests like certain main quests where you could just get your bomb up and do it any time of day, which makes sense. There's some action you could do that at any time. Most of the main quests will be added automatically or via talking through the DM system to chat with your virtual waifus and they give things for you to do. And you'll pass the time by either doing quests or sleeping on on the sofa. Why can't we just get a bed? <laughs> And no, you can't keep sleeping on the sofa again and again to skip the time. You can only sleep once, so you can't do it consecutively, is what I mean. So if you have a nighttime quest, you could do like a singular battle in like the VR and that will skip. And then you can sleep on the sofa to get to night. And I mean, I like the system, but I mean, you could also view it as an inconvenience because a lot of the stores are only available during the day and maybe the evening. But no store is available during the night, so you probably skip that. But honestly, I don't think it's that inconvenient. Honestly, it probably made it more realistic, which I do like. And also side quests are given through the DM as well with other characters or straight up just random NPCs. And then you also find quests under the internet at internet, not internet, nah, in the notification tab under the help request info. Also, you can view your entire schedule here, which could build up. So I guess that just means I'm bad at managing. Oh well. And also proxy primer, which is just a bunch of free stuff that you can get after you progress through the game, which is always nice. I'll take some free stuff, so basically achievements kinda, but they have a lot of systems like this so it's not the only one. It's decently complicated I know, compared to like Genshin and Star I feel like this game is a lot more complicated in terms of their gameplay. Well, and then we get into the hollow part, which is I'm convinced it's gonna be the make and break factor of this game. Because if you're either gonna like it or you're gonna hate it, or you put up with it to play your waifus that you spend your money on, which we'll see. <laughs> well, let me explain what the hollow is again. In the game, they describe it as a companion hollow that individually represent main story, side quest, and then the disc grinding, which is called rally commission and lastly hollow zero or the equivalent of genshin abyss and with the exception of those rally commission which is completely 100 percent combat for all the other ones you will be put into the tvs as your bang boo and you will be clicking around those tvs one by one unless you're exploded then you skip it kind of and yeah that's gonna be a big part of the game just clicking and hopping through the TVs and you know give them credit they get pretty damn creative with all the puzzles you can do and considering it's so limited you're literally just hopping through one TV to another they put a lot of effort into it but I think you can see how you could get bored of this pretty damn quickly if you like hopping to TV I kind of like it this is a gigantic part of this game this is like your job it's like the ratio of combat to this is like 50 50 you 50% combat and you're 50% hopping through TVs and solving puzzles. So it is a risky commitment for Hoyerverse to be doing this, yet creative, but it's not like they could change it now. It's like they made it the focus of the game, so it's gonna be what it is. You're gonna be stuck with it. But if we're talking about the combat though, it's quite good in my opinion. The combat is definitely an upgraded version of Honkai Impact 3rd, but some people say that's actually a negative, so I guess it's still kind of subjective. With three members max per party and a lot of combos and switching. This game has a lot more emphasis and dependent on getting your character in and out. In Zenless, they will literally pause the screen when this bar on the enemy is full and you hit them with a heavy attack. A heavy attack is your special attack, so your E by default, or your last hit on your character's normal attack. This trigger a chain attack and they will pause the screen for you to click a button or you'll wait it out, but literally there's no reason to wait it out because you miss damage so yes this game will literally pause and tell you do it click the button and this will happen about three times on a large combo because each bar uh, unless it's dead you probably trigger it three times because you switch to one character and then you switch to another character and then you switch back to your original character so yeah it's a chain 
Oh, and it also has the perfect dodge uh, counter attack, just like Honkai Impact. So if you get a time, you can do that. And if you perfectly timed it even more by switching instead of dodging, because you either dodge in your character or you switches out, you do a counter attack instead, which is honestly cooler. It's like a parry, basically. And of course, there's the highlight of gacha games, your ultimate, which is charged by this counter on the left upper corner, which I thought was a combo bar and I was not wrong it's actually both so they mashed it in so it's it's a combo counter and your old counter at the same time and so when you're attacking the number will increase and when it reached 3000 the ultimate is charged for one of your agent and you can go ahead and use that or let it stay there for some reason and save it I mean Maybe you want to get the last hit and look cool. I mean, I'm sure I saw do that. But you don't use it, it's kind of wasted because the bar will not charge up being full, obviously. So, with certain characters like Ben, the bear, and Kaleida, they have combo attack and ultimate, which has increased multiplier by about 300%. So it ranges about around 200 to 300%, which is a lot, not gonna lie. This basically entices you and kind of not gonna lie, obligates you to put them together. Kaleida is a 5 star and Ben is a 4 star. I mean, I suppose it's not bad. So yeah, this game has like a squad system basically. At least they implies that they will because right now pretty much she and Ben is the only character that has that feature. But I'm sure they'll add more in the future. And I hope they do because look at this. This is sick. That's amazing. Also it does more damage so you there's no reason why I guess. And of course, I can't forget to mention the elements of this game because all their game has elements and I'll list off all of them actually. Some of them are pretty basic, it's, it's those that you can't imagine. So of course there's physical that interrupts and reduce their physical res. Then there's electric which shocks and interrupt enemies when you're attacking. And bonus for robotic enemies, it will be stunned instead. Ice will have shatter damage just like Genshin and reduce ice res while fire burn enemies obviously and they take damage over time and organic enemies which are just normal people I guess because we're organic <laughs> are unable to move when burned which actually doesn't make sense that you usually play all around when you burn all of them are pretty damn typical but there's an exclusive to this game, it's called Aether, which is a corruption based element that will build up as a character with the element attack and deal Aether damage obviously. And ethereal enemies will then attack its allies and you too, so I mean, it's a free for all. <laughs> I like that, that certain elements have like certain bonuses to different enemy types and so far we'll see the ethereals, the robot, and human enemies which are organic but there's more too. But each of them has like normal enemies, advanced enemies, and elite enemies which are the bosses. This is typical. And that's pretty much all of the combat and I think that's pretty good. It's fast paced, it has combos, it obviously has team synergy, and you gotta be strategic about it and you'll probably be mashing a lot of buttons obviously way more than Genshin actually I don't think there's much of a switching cooldown not as much uh, like you're basically spamming the space while switching you can do it like, I, I swear to god I actually spam the space bar to try to get the perfect counter switch but of course I gotta quickly cover the type of content in the hollow as well so lightning round the main stories and side run similarly durations and difficulties are listed for you on the side as well as the battery cost to which you will hop through the TVs follow the objective but mostly Puzzles, and you will a lot of time encounter red TVs which is where you get to fight the best part of the game. There will be debuffs on the way that will simply either take away a portion of your HP on all of your characters or getting increased pressure. When the pressure gauge hits 100 you will get a debuff with unique effect that you can check by hovering over the weird X. You can have up to 5 debuffs. Then there are rally commissions which are a shorter fight but fights only and no hopping through TVs and it will give you currencies that you can go and gotcha for your artifacts slash disk drive. I'll touch that later. While in Hollow Zero, basically the abyss, you will be hopping through the TV basically indefinitely 
or at least it feels like indefinitely, and collect slash buying buff that will strengthen your characters. But the twist is that by getting the same buff, it will combine to make a mega big boy buff. Rinse and repeat for like an hour, <laughs> maybe more. But to be fair, the boss fights are really fun and actually rather difficult. <sighs> now that's pretty much all the gameplay content, at least for now. But there is also a calming, more general quality of life side of this game, which I will now touch about. Zenless pays a lot more attention to the improvement of player experience, I should say. And you could tell that this game is a refinement of all their experiences going through all the games that they have created thus far. To the MC being able to talk and have actual personality. <laughs> well, I would like to point out the perspective of this game's MC. So you have a female and a male, Belle and Wise respectively. And so during the opening cutscene, you will choose either one of them just like Genshin. This will determine who will be in control of the Bangboo in the story most of the time. And the keyword is most and not all. This is not set in stone obviously because in the story there will be actually canon events where you will be viewing the perspective of the other MC. This is definitely them mixing from what they learned from Honkai Impact 3rd protagonist versus Genshin. Because Honkai Impact 3rd has obvious main groups of protagonists, but they change perspective quite frequently. While Genshin, you just have one protagonist that never talks and plays through the entire story following them. Dario's pretty much in the same story as Genshin in that realm. A prime example of this change is in the sibling quest, which I did post it here. Shameless plug. <laughs> Where it is a canon event that Wise, the brother, will save Bell regardless if you pick Bell at the start. And I actually really like this change because in Genshin, I actually felt like I never really connected well with the two MC because just knowing that they will do the same thing, even if they traded places, they will do the exact same choice because it's dependent on who you choose will become the leader of the Abyss or you. And that just means they don't have a unique personality because they just do the same thing. So honestly, having a canon choice will allow the MC to have a more unique and likable personality, at least in my opinion, and that should be a win-win because that means you like the character and you play the game in revenue. Like and also just like Star Rail, you have interaction with all the other agents slash character and they'll randomly slide into your DM, meet you around town, and as you're doing your daily, they just pop up and just talk to you and these interactions matter because depending on your choices so there's negative and positive dialogue and if you pick the positive one your trust with them will go up and they will give you more quests for them to do so honestly is that a good thing now that I think about it so maybe you could just tell them to f off hmm. Yeah, and it, if you pick the negative choices, your trust would actually go down. I'm not sure what that does yet. Maybe they'll hate you and try to kill you in the future. Who knows? If that's true, maybe that's a that's a funny thing. And I found out about the negative trust thing um, when I was talking to Nicole. I, I wanted to make fun of her. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nicole. Please forgive me. But yeah, honestly, without that, I just thought that they just like everything you said. <laughs> I mean, I like it. It makes you get into a parasocial okay. relationship with this character. Oh, wait. And of course, there is the interface and layout of the game. So you got five buttons on the bottom right of your screen that changes depending on if you're in a safe zone or in combat. And in a safe zone, you got cameras, opening up your DMs, your schedule, sprinting which could also be shift and navigation button to tell you where you are gonna go during a quest in the save zone well in combat it changes to your ultimate switching special sprinting and then auto attack and when you activate a chain attack you will have a choice between one or the other character with q and e because yeah you have the right to choose if you open your menu instead of paimon floating or your character staring at a phone you instead get a pleasant and random character just chilling and calming music playing in the background. Just pause for a minute. Yeah, I could be here for like a while. And then you got the big event tab on the right, the yellow one. If you have any that is running 
at the moment. And all of the button for the rest of it in the menu is at the bottom. And you have a travel button for fast travel, the shop, your gotcha banner where your money burns your characters and the character uh, page also has like an animation you know when you click on those tabs Me r.i.p nicole animation moment of silence nothing to fear the cunning hairs are here and you got your inventory and then the internet uh, i mean internet and then vr practice for the materials and then dms and then there's an like additional page for the cameras, mail, notices, and an unstuck feature. That's nice. Then of course, you got the setting, which leads us to... Being a modern game that they are, they make the graphics better, obviously. And now you could play at a crisp and perfect 140p. Still at 60 FPS though. Bruh. But hey, Genshin still doesn't have a 60 FPS on PC after 3 years, so I'll take what I can get. I mean like just the looks of this game is more refined to me. And it certainly does help with the more modern urban look to the world and not fully fantasy world, if you get what I mean. Like just look at this AC unit. I don't know why, but I find it so mesmerizing for absolutely no reason. Right now, there's only three main closed area that you could travel to. The 6th street, the construction site, and then the maid palace is what I call it. I don't think it's actually the name. But it's still in beta after all. There's obviously more like they literally included locked areas just to show you. Like there will be more. So that's cool. I like that they cared about that. It's like, yo. Please, it's not done yet. And then there's of course the combat map is just a place where you go in and fight which it's a clear extension to the normal area you can tell like they look more construction like bars and stuff it's part of the construction site and then if it's in a palace it's in a palace. <laughs> A clear improvement that you can tell right away if you play all their other Hoyoverse game is the NPC. And I'm talking about both the interactables and non-interactable ones. But I'm gonna talk about that non-interactable one first. And you will know, if you phase through them, they are non-interactable. <laughs> all the other games has NPCs too that just is basically a background character that makes the place look more lively. But most of the time they don't move, but just look at this. Like they just walking. Like all of them has like their own personality. Like you tell like maybe they're slant over, like they walk weird. Like even their clothing looks better. Like it just looks so much more alive, even normal background characters. You can tell they put a lot of work into it. But then there's one thing is that in the settings, usually in Genshin, I'm pretty sure Honkai Star has it too, where it's like your background character, the amount of it is controlled by crowd density. But in this game, there is no crowd density, at least not yet, not in the beta. So there's like a set amount of background NPCs, so maybe it might lag you out. Yeah, maybe they'll, I think they should add one just in case, you know, just want to run it. Maybe, uh, apparently a lot of people still playing mobile, so <laughs> it should be a good addition. Oh, and then there's also these like storage crates that you can shift around, but they're stopped by an invisible wall, so I guess. <laughs> well, now I'm gonna talk about the interactable NPC, but that means we have to get into the... Now there's a lot of dailies and weeklies in this game, but they are mashed into one place and it's this bangboo right here called Mr. Hello in front of the music store with a sign that says daily task, you literally can't miss it. But there's four daily missions and they always stay the same. I'll say I kind of like it, but that's just because I'm a lazy bum. Oh, this one, there's only four tasks, stay the same all day. And that is to log in, pretty simple, spend 160 of your battery, and then get a scratch on ticket from this good boy over here, or girl, I don't know. I think the name Howl is for a boy dog though, but who knows, this could be. And you interact with the dog, and then the scratch off ticket is at the bottom left of the screen, and not the newspaper. I almost, no, I did miss it at the start, I should make that bigger, like really. You scratch it, and I think the top prize, you'll get some film or something, that's cool. And film is the gotcha currency basically so yeah that is the top 
top price. Then you go to this coffee shop, you get yourself a coffee for 60 batteries. So basically your daily stamina is pretty much the 240, just like other Hoyo games, because they put in the commission, so they tell you to get it. So you expect to get 240 stamina every day. So yeah, and they just wanted to make it more fancy, I guess. Then you got the weekly goals, which involve the Hollow Zero Rally Commission and doing VR trials and then also making video store money. money. Each of them give 400 films. That's a lot because it's the same exchange as Genshin being 160 equals one pull. So doing all these tasks, you get 1,600 film, which is 10 pulls every single week, which is pretty nice. And also you get marbles to buy level materials and ascension stuff which is nice and there is one time claim achievements basically i'm pretty sure they do reset too there's a counter on the bottom and each of them gives 600 film which is a lot and i like it this game is being very generous with their rewards right now it's going up on my like list now to the other businesses you got the barbie barbie Marty needle shop that allows you to spend currencies that you get from the rally commissions to gotcha for your drive which is basically the artifact pieces that gives your character stat you gotta love that they made a gotcha too hey uh, it's basically the same for all their other games so who am i kidding it's just a different method of acquiring them. still a gotcha and you'll unlock higher quality drive as you level up your internet level then you can dismantle useless ones to get their level of materials which is stupidly hard to get by the way so you're gonna have any trouble grinding up for multiple characters like you haven't already then you got general chop that cooks you food for buffs during your mission i don't really use it much because i don't even use food in genshin so maybe i just don't care about food buff but it's always nice animation's sick and of course you got the coffee shop which is integrated into your daily so yeah you gotta get it by it with denny's you can only drink one per real life day by the way so only 60 every day I know this because I tried resetting the day in the game and yeah, it doesn't work. It's like, you drink too much coffee. Alright, then you got the arcade god finger. I don't know what I said. Run by um, uh, this lady. Busy, 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 okay, busy, someone busy. at Hoyverse definitely got a. Well, they got a couple mini games you can play. Not much right now. I'm sure they'll add some in the future. But they're pretty fun at close. But you only get a couple films from doing the achievement here. So I'm assuming you only do this when you're freaking bored or you're just desperately grinding for a character and you need the film for it. Achievement grinding, am I right? Yeah, you get desperate enough to not pull out that wallet. Then, sometimes they occasionally run events that makes these games co-op, and then it's fun. And then they also give you prizes for it. A lot more film, by the way, so that's actually a lot better. And you get to beat the heck out of people, and I, I destroy people in that hound dog game. That shit was fun. And then you got this layer IO game combination. It's, I don't know, it's, like, it's like snake combination. Then you got the 141 convenience store. Can't go in it yet. Maybe you can't later but the main attention is the three bang booze that sells you in front of a store and they're really important because they sell level of materials for your character's abilities or basically the equivalent of talents in Genshin which is nice because that means you, have, you don't really have to grind for it you just need the money to buy it which is not bad I actually like that better and you buy corresponding to the character's elements it, it resets every day so you get a lot of it you just need the money so just play the game and you get it and the rank the material would increase as your internet level goes up because you see there's C rank, B rank, and A rank. It just goes as your level up and your character's ability levels up too and requires more expensive stuff, which makes sense. It's typical. And then next is an interesting one because it's weird. It's just due to a whole your recent fascination with freaking trash cans <laughs> due to the raccoon MC and Star Rail. You got Sage in a barrel. Don't know what they look like, but Upon kicking it, it will allow you to trade commemorative coin, and I have no clue right now how you get this other than playing the game. I feel like you maybe just handed out one of the story quests. I got a couple of them, and you trade it for random stuff. This just could be like level of materials, you know, ascension stuff. And no, apparently, I haven't got it yet, but from my schedule, my quest page, apparently you get some quest items from the dude or girl in the trash can. Yeah, it's like videotapes from 
the schedule. So I guess you get those, you get lucky enough. They're probably like high percentage stuff. Then you got the gadget store, which allows you to buy, but more accurately, craft engines or recycle them, which I'll get to what engines are in a bit, but this is where you craft them if you don't get them from Gotcha. The last place, but not actually, it's down the suspicious alleyway to this guy to, upon trading paint cans, will reward you with some, you know, random stuff. I actually don't know what these stuff are really. But I'm assuming this is pretty much like the equivalent of like the trees in Genshin when you like give coins and stuff and they give you back stuff. It's basically that as you get it. And yes, you also get these paint cans from playing the game. That was a lot, and I'm kind of tired of it. But we're not done yet, because I haven't even talked about leveling up and building your characters yet. And save the most tedious and most important part for last, too, is what makes this game so popular. Gotcha. So as mentioned, the currencies are film, and you get encrypted tapes, like video tapes, because you know, these TVs and stuff, yeah, that's their theme, which are limited pools, and then there's normal tape, which are the standard permanent pools. And the probability is basically the same as all their other games, which is pity at 90, and there's a 50-50 for limited banners, and a guaranteed A rank or 4 star at 10 pool. S rank is the 5 star in this case, if you haven't played it. There is no separate Separate banners for weapons or in this game is engines that's what's engine are their weapon but that's interesting there's no weapon banner separate one yet and I'm not sure if that's just a beta thing but I hope it's not because actually I kind of like that more a little bit but I guess that means like your probability is kind of skewed now with three different things you can get in a single banner and that is engine the agents and the bang boobs I mean bang boobs <laughs> okay well Bang Boo are basically the companion that will support you and attack the enemies depending on their ability. They're actually a quite cool addition, in my opinion anyway, because I'm just used Bruh. to Paimon doing absolutely nothing in Genshin, so it's good to have a companion to actually help you out in the battlefield. And they actually do quite a lot. Not it does add quite a level of tedious to the game though, because other Hoyoverse game, you gotta grind for the characters, the weapons, and then the stats pieces. Is there a universal name for them? I'm calling them stats like that. They are in fact the discs and relics. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> but the Bangboo are another thing to add to that list. You have to get lucky and then grind too. Because you have to level them up by grinding your materials, by playing the infinite hollow zero. Uh, hours in there and then you gotta level them up obviously with the level of materials you get from VR training then you got the chips which are the stats pieces for the bang boos because yeah they got stats too but I guess it's more or so buff so it's not as RNG we still gotta get them from getting lucky by playing the game I actually don't think there's like a pull or anything for it and you put these on the bang boo by going to the last NPC spot on 6th street named Enzo, which is this buff dude with a robot arm, in the first floor by the way. They got a second floor but no purpose there just yet. And then you gotta play this like small mini game where you fit the chips in this like tic-tac-toe box. And the better the stats, the more space it takes up so you gotta fit them in there meticulously. It's not bad and it's also it's pretty creative, I'll give them that. But it is definitely another thing that you need to keep your mind on when you're trying to get your favorite waifu or a spando because you gotta spend more to get the adequate engines for that character and then you gotta get the adequate bang boo for that character so what i'm hearing is hello i like money finally we get to the agents themselves and it's the reason why you're gonna dish out your wallet for this game because other than the bang boo the system is copy and pasted from genshin and star rail so let's run past the process of getting your green life so you get them you're screaming you're like yes let's get unlucky then yeah, you'd be depressed, but you still gotta grind for him. Gotta level it up with the level of currencies from VR Trials and Quest. <laughs> then you gotta remove their level cap with more materials from VR Trials. Then you gotta level up with their talents using Denny's, which is the currencies, and then materials you get from the three bang boo at the grocery store, as I mentioned. Oh, and the agent, of course, also has like an extra duplicate system. You know, so it's for the whales to give all your worst their money for some reason to get six copies. Yeah. And you got to get to their specific engine and level up those engines with different materials from VR trials. 
<laughs> they removed the level cap from VR trials. Oh, and then you can get duplicates of these too, just like weapons and Gen. And then you got the grind for the stats pieces or disc in this game because they're basically a music disc. Just listen to music does give you power of built there. Well, you got a gacha for them after you get currencies from running rally commissions, which cost a hundred value. Batteries to run, by the way, they take quite a lot. So in a day, you could probably only run it twice at most, but they give a lot of currencies. Yeah, that's for one agent. Good luck. I gotta give an overall rating to this game. For a beta, this game is extremely polished and they really just need to add more story content, obviously, but that's typical also. I mean, it's not really nitpick. As it stands now, it honestly could launch and I wouldn't bat an eye. And I really enjoy the lore as much because it's pretty much like we're a freelancer basically that has no overarching goal other than just, you know, trying to make a living taking jobs regarding the hollow. And I like it, it's that simple, you just live just like everyone else no super overarching goal at all and the cutscene to me are fantastic and i see it as an upgrade to genshin impact style animation but a lot of you did point it out in the comments that under the nekomata cutscene my favorite by the way is that the animations are too bouncy and many of you say it's too animated and honestly at first i was like is that even a thing but actually i could kind of see it yeah i could see what you guys mean it's like more yeah it's like more bouncy it's like it's kind of <laughs> jumpy but that's definitely a preference thing and personally i like it i think it's like snappy it's quick high quality but you know tell me in the comments is it really too animated and obviously there's problems that the, the player base sees a split issue is obviously the censorship which is pretty much occurs in all our games now i don't know if there's anything we can do about it at this point and censorship or they get reversed so if you didn't know they censor some of the gore elements of this game it's like this dude transforming into a, an ethereal is like more gruesome in the last beta and some of the animation and clothing of the agents is more covered up the obvious one is nicole and apparently grace initial oh design too but like God. look at this like i no way that it's gonna pass <laughs> I, I could tell you that without knowing you. But there's probably more. But I think someone said that they nerfed Nekomata shorts or something, but I didn't even know this stuff. So, yeah, censorship happens. Hopefully, they don't push it more. We'll find out when the game comes out 2024. But honestly, personally, this game is a 10 out of 10 for me for gameplay. For the music, it's fantastic. The music is amazing. Like, just listen to this cut. <laughs> The MC has personality too. Agents just I mean other than the MC, I feel like all the characters in the other games is good, but now they improved the MC. It feels like all the other characters, high quality, interesting, and likable. And also the combat is super quick and strategic as well with all the switching and timing. Definitely a skill thing, totally, and not spamming. But yeah, I mean, I like the Hollow. I like the gameplay of the Hollow. I find it creative, and maybe I just like hopping through TVs, but you gotta decide that for yourself, because I feel like that might be the only point deductive if I didn't like it. It's just like, thoroughly, you could really see that this game is just an upgrade of everything that they have done before. It's like, it's what I wanted to see. It's like, but tell me what you think in the comments. Is it way better? Do you guys have my same opinion? Well, that's pretty much wrap up my video. I hope I didn't miss much. It's just way too long, probably way more long to edit. I do recommend you guys trying it out when it comes out in 2024 to determine whether you like it or not hopping through TVs and the characters. Well, anyways, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and i see you in the next video. Bye!